Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeff Davis, uh, former basketball coach at Mount Mansfield Union High School. Um, and I was contacted by Coach Dave Fredrickson uh, about the possibility of uh, doing a little virtual um, discussion. Um, so right away, I knew that the VBCA was hard up when they asked me, but uh, I will definitely take the opportunity now that I am a recovering basketball coach. Um, anytime I can talk a little X's and O's, I think it's probably a little bit of, bit of good therapy for me. Um, so this is my first year not coaching. Uh, so uh, I still have a few thoughts that are fresh in my mind um, that I'd like to, to uh, give to you. Um, you know, hopefully this is something, uh, a couple things you can pull out of this. Um, and um, if, if there's any other questions you might have, um, we'll get to the contacts later. But um, what I want to talk a little bit about today is um, zone offense. And obviously, um, you know, everybody has different personnel and everybody has their own philosophies around zone offenses. Uh, and I just thought maybe I'd share mine. Um, and again, if it's something that you could use or just a philosophy point that you might be able to bring into your team, uh, then that's great. Um, the biggest thing uh, I want to talk about uh, today quickly was, you know, how to score against zone on purpose. Uh, and I know that sounds kind of silly. I mean, we all try to score uh, the basketball. Um, but I find uh, I found that a lot of teams would go to zone for a couple of reasons. When I started thinking about that. Uh, it really definitely helped me uh, in terms of wanting to figure out what we want to do against zones. Um, I plan on showing you some video clip today. Uh, I know this is a virtual thing, so you can actually probably pause and rewind. Uh, so uh, that's something that hopefully will be useful to you. But the number one thing I found about scoring against zone is sometimes it's very difficult to score uh, on purpose. Um, plays have to sort of happen organically. Uh, you know, the whole adage of swinging the ball, moving the ball side to side, trying to get into the gaps. Uh, and that takes time. And so one thing I found is that at the end of quarters, uh, end of halves, uh, out of a timeout, uh, when a team was playing man-to-man -man the entire time, uh, you'd look up and they were going zone. And I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, it's hard to score on purpose uh, if you don't work at it. The second thing, unfortunately, I'll say is um, a lot of times, you know, the whole saying, you're open for a reason. Um, a lot of bad shots are taken uh, against zone in some cases. Um, players rush, um, players feel like they're open, uh, and uh, a lot of threes are shot that may not necessarily be great shots early in possessions. Uh, and obviously bad shots lead to um, high percentage shots on the other end. So uh, we've worked pretty hard in the last few years on trying to have a system in place against zone uh, that would hopefully uh, put us in a position where um, players can touch the ball where they have a high degree of success. Um, other teams would have to work to take away what we're trying to do. Uh, and because of that, uh, we were able to expose another piece of their zone that maybe was a little bit weaker at that time. Uh, and I have a few video clips of what I want to show you about that. Um, I think the biggest thing I want to talk about first before we get into X's and O's uh, in terms of plays are just philosophies against zone. You know, we worked hard on uh, working with our players to, to uh, have some commonalities in place. Uh, terms that we used. Uh, and so I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, the biggest thing we we would say is don't stand. Um, you know, coaches in this, at, you know, the high school level are really good at what they do. Uh, they do their homework. Uh, they will take away your primary sets. They will take away what you want to do uh, against their zones. And the biggest thing that we worked our kids on is, you know, you see a turned head, get to the rim. You know, if you see a soft spot in the zone, make a play. Um, there, there isn't, a, it's not rocket science by any means, but uh, a lot of times when we were doing what we were trying to do, teams would do a nice job of taking away our primary options. And uh, we would struggle if players would stand around. We would struggle if, you know, an entire side of its own would collapse and we still stood behind the three point line. So we really worked hard with our kids on getting to the front of the rim. Uh, if you, you know, getting behind the defense and, um, you know, cutting hard to the front of the rim if, if that's open. Uh, and I think that's one thing that we did really well uh, the last few years. And, and granted, we did have some size, and that definitely helps. Um, but I think that's one thing that we definitely did well was we were able to take what the defense gave us uh, in terms of, um, you know, when things softened up. So, um, you know, the other thing about zone um, that we we really tried to emphasize 
um, is we want to take the shot we want to take, you know, and um, a lot of times, you know, programs work hard on, on different man offenses and play, putting players in position to score and succeed. Um, and then uh, when they got to against zone, it seemed like they kind of just went with what the defense gave them uh, too much. And uh, we worked hard in saying, yes, they are playing zone, but that doesn't mean we can't get players in a position they're comfortable to score. So um, what I have today is a few clips uh, of different games uh, over the past few years um, where we saw a lot of zone. And uh, by the end of the year, I feel like we were very efficient against uh, zone. Um, this takes time, obviously. And, um, you know, this is near the end of the year, uh, some of these videos. So, uh, but I thought it would be good to show you a couple of different looks uh, to kind of get a sense of, um, you know, what we tried to do. Uh, and also um, sort of what happens when zones take away what you want to do and how it opens up other things. Um, so I'm getting pretty good at this Google Meet thing now that I'm teaching in the hybrid model. So um, I'm going to present my screen and we're going to go through a few things um, from a few different games. Uh, and so if you'd bear with me here while I do that. So what I wanted to pull up was a couple of different uh, looks that I've time stamped uh, in a couple different plays that we ran. Um, bear with me here. It's going to take me a minute to um, to get where I want to be. Um, but uh, here are a couple of different uh, looks uh, in, a, in a certain game here. And the one I want to talk about first is what we call pin. Uh, this is a Bill Self set. Um, I did not create this set by any means. Um, and obviously, we all know that we want to sort of um, take different uh, ideas from different coaches as we go. Um, most of this look, uh, quite honestly, can be ran against either an odd or an even set zone, uh, which is nice. Uh, and again, uh, we, we feel like right now, early in the game, we want to establish uh, getting the ball inside. Uh, we don't want to settle for, for too many outside shots that may not be high percentage shots, which would give the other team an opportunity to run uh, and, and get comfortable. So uh, this is what we call pin. Uh, basically, we're just going to screen in the middle of the zone. Uh, I'm going to play that a couple different times from a couple different teams so that you can take a look. Uh, we will be uh, pausing it a little bit so you can see what we're doing. Um, but basically, we run a lot of stuff that screens in zones, and that's something that we've had a lot of success with. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about this and let this play develop. So we have a baseline runner here, and we're setting up a double screen on the, in the baseline. Uh, and so we have a lot of options out of this. But I want you to notice what happens. Uh, a well-coached team, knowing what we want to run, taking away what they take away. And so um, going back there again, I apologize. This is going to take me a little time here to get used to this. But um, we're running a baseline runner, um, and then we're screening in that middle player of the zone. Uh, I think what we see here is a team that's prepared for that, that plays sort of a man-to-man -man look with the wing, the bottom of the zone, uh, and notice what they're giving up. So uh, a lot of times, um, you know, the coaches do a good job of taking away what we want to do. Uh, and so we look to enter the ball to the middle of the zone, but that was guarded. But I want you to notice what happens here uh, when that happens is that, you know, now is when time – the time when players have to make plays. And so we see an opportunity here where, where my player uh, saw the back of the defender's head 14, and so he cut to the front of the rim. Uh, and that's just another thing that we try to teach against zone is if you see the back of your defender's head, get to the front of the rim, all right? And so there, there's a nice finish there early in the game um, because their defender turned their head. Uh, we're going to run the same play here um, in just a moment as I bring the – time up. Um, same play. We call it pin. Um, see if we can get it developed again here. Sorry. So we're going to run pin again here. Again, this is against the 2-3. Last time it was a little 1-2-2. Uh, again, we just send a baseline runner to get squared up. All right, he's going to take off, and we, that's obviously going to be a shooter, hopefully, to the corner. Uh, and then we slide into the middle uh, right there. Again, another cut, another finish. Oh, he missed. <laughs>
we're going to show you that look one last time um, here. Okay, again, it gets a team that's playing us on. Uh, you may notice that we went to this early, uh, early in, in, a, in, a, in a game. Basically, basically, again, we wanted to make sure we got a high percentage shot. Baseline runner coming. Uh, the other, the other two players stagger, getting to the middle of the zone. We're going to go ahead and screen in that middle and slide Asa to the middle of the zone. Obviously, I believe Asa probably should have shot there, but again, you see it's a high percentage look uh, inside the middle of the zone. Show you that one more time. Again, we're playing against zone, running some basic offense here. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, another look we ran called Vermont. And again, all of these sets um, are basically trying to get players in a position where they can have success against zone. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pull that up as well. Um, Vermont is another screen in of a zone trying to get a high percentage shot uh, where we can. Um, so take that, take that look here. So again, a lot of this action bring you know brings a shooter towards the the ball side, and um, you know we try to uh, make the bottom of a zone commit to a shooter, uh, and then look to screen in the middle of the zone. We do that a lot with different looks we made, uh, and again, obviously these can change based on personnel. So right away we've engaged the lower defender of the two three zone uh, because we have a player that can make that shot, and that's really important. We're going to go ahead. And now, because they've adjusted to their zone, we're going to try to take, you know, take advantage of the one-on-one -on -one opportunity in the middle. So we're going to slide the shooter up to the wing where our big number 10 is. We're going to slide the shooter up. Um, number 10 then goes down and screens in the middle of the zone. We have a nice curl for a lefty. To show you that play again. We're running Vermont again. Again, we're going to slide a shooter to the to the wing. We want him to be in, engage that middle defender, uh, the bottom defender, excuse me, and we are then going to screen in the middle of the zone. Wanted to show you another look that we did, um, again, trying to attack uh, the bottom of the zone um, with screening action. Uh, and we would call this cross. And cross is something that uh, we would run a lot, again, just to sort of try to get players in a position to succeed um, where we feel they have a high percentage look. Uh, and so we'll show you cross in this game uh, and then one other game. So again, this is against the two three zone. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna attack the baseline again with some action from the weak side, uh, and we really want to try to get uh, our post player catching the ball comfortably um, where he can score. Player comes through. All right, we got a shooter coming to the corner, which occupies the bottom of the two three zone. Notice our two bigs are screening the weak side and the middle of the zone, and we slide our score to that spot. 
I don't know if Aces scores or not, but that's, again, if you're thinking about where you're catching the ball against the zone, uh, that's a pretty good place to catch it. Oh, looks like maybe he traveled there. I'll show you that again. So again, we're gonna run this play we called cross, uh, sending a shooter to the corner and then screening with our lower two guys. So this is another sort of double stack action. We got a shooter to the corner that's gonna occupy the bottom of the zone. We then screen in the other two bottoms uh, and slide a player to the strong block. I guess we don't need to see Asa travel again. Um, so that's another one we would run. Um, and something that you can definitely get uh, when you are working uh, against a zone. I'm gonna show you that one more time uh, against another look. Sorry, wrong look. So this is cross again. So we're going to go ahead. This is against the uh, SB's 113. Again, we're going to try to attack the, the bottom of this, um, which a lot of people may not think about attacking the bottom of the 2 3. A lot of times you try to attack the, um, the gaps on the wings. Um, but if you, can get, if you can get the bottom low wing player to have to commit uh, to a shooter, a lot of things open up in the post. So we're sending a shooter to the corner, and then we're gonna go ahead and screen in the bottom two players for that shot. We'll go back to a couple other looks in just a minute, um, but I think it's important that we just uh, kind of talk a little bit about um, you know, how players take away what you want to do. It's really important that your players uh, have the comfort and the, and the confidence to make a play. Um, your, the teams you're going to play against will take away your primary options. Uh, and when you're able to make a play out of that, uh, definitely something um, that, you know, you can see some success. Um, we're going to open up another film here, uh, looking at uh, a game against CVU this time. Uh, and just take a look at our basic. We're going to show you our basic look um, for a couple of different um, games here. Uh, and again, it's, it's trying to attack one weak side or, or sorry, one uh, side of the bottom of the zone. So we're going to go ahead and slide this up to a look where we overload the side um, and try to uh, make the team we're playing make a decision about who they're guarding. So a lot of times in our basic look, we're just going to go ahead and overload one side of the court. Uh, this is a very um, methodical type look for us. This is not a time where we're going to swing the ball back and forth. We're going to stay on one side of the zone here. And again, we're going to try to, to get to a spot where we have to make that bottom player make a decision. And this player can definitely take this shot and make this shot. Uh, it's early in the possession. Uh, that's a shot we'll get a lot in this in this sort of overload look. Uh, and so uh, the player, uh, Justin Morris, decided not to take this shot right here, even though it is a good look. Um, but if you notice, what we have is we still have players behind the zone, and we're still forcing the bottom of the zone to make a decision. How many coaches, and myself included, agree that this catch is such a hard thing to guard when you're playing zone? Is it the bottom guy? Is it the top guy? Are you going to try to bump it? Are you going to try to stay? Um, this is, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, we try to have our players catch the ball definitively in between the corner and the elbow. Uh, if they catch it elbow extended, it's, it's guard top. If they catch it baseline, it's wing bottom. You catch it here, it's kind of difficult. And what happens is you can soften up the zone by more than one player closing out. 
we teach our players in this basic look, if you're the bottom, they should catch the ball where they can't score. And if they're catching the ball where they can score, that is too easy for the middle of the zone to guard. So we really work on getting our heels on the baseline as much as possible in this. Uh, they are having scoring opportunities, but it's going to take an adjustment on their part to score. If they, if, if Asa, who was on the bottom, would post right up uh, on the block, obviously he would be manned right now. Uh, it's very difficult for a player to buy into going that low against us. So I like where Asa is right now. <clears throat> so again, on a catch, we now have a player that's below the zone. Uh, and my big makes a nice bounce uh, for a finish. We'll go with that same look again. And I apologize for the pausing here, guys. I'm uh, definitely not used to all of this here. But um, we're going to go with that same look again early in the possession here. and talk about what we're going to try to get out of this basic. So right away, we're seeing a zone here, and, and we talk about, you know, not taking an, an early shot that's not the best shot. So that's pretty good uh, on behalf of Trent here not to take that shot. Uh, our basic look, again, is just that classic overload, uh, where we overload one side of the zone. Uh, and we just kind of have rules in place around the two bigs. In this. And so they're basically in a tandem. The idea is if one big catches, the other player cuts to the front of the rim. Uh, and it's either a baseline catch comes for the, with a dive or a high post catch comes with a, a, you know, a pass behind the zone. So here we have a situation where, again, Trent's catching it, not dead corner but not too high either. He's again occupying that bottom wing of the two, three. So now at this point, we have a miss here, I believe. Um, our player should have went to the cutter, but there's that cut we talked about um, with the, the bottom guy catching the ball and the elbow uh, player diving to the front of the rim. Again, notice what happens when, when you have that action. Uh, the entire defense is below uh, well below the foul line. Uh, and so, you know, we looked at, at what we can get out of this. And, and, and a lot of times earlier, uh, we would have players just sort of standing here and allowing the defense to converge on on this player. Uh, we'll see how this develops. So that's a miss. I feel like we probably should have passed the ASA there, but we didn't. But again, looking at that action, it's definitely a uh, good action to get. Um, We'll show you basic again. So again, we're in this sort of overload scenario, all right, where we have the, the two players. I will say Ace is a little, uh, he's not deep enough right now. Uh, again, we always said, that bottom player should not be posting up. They shouldn't feel like they're posting up in this basic look. He wants to get lower. See how it's important that we allow this play to develop. If we just started moving the ball from side to side, this would never develop. So here's our overload situation. Okay. We, we want to give the catch. We want to give the catch uh, to Asa if possible. That's a high priority for this offense. We want to make sure we get the ball to the short corner. All right. And then notice what we have in this situation. We have a player that gets behind the defense again. We have a player whose defensive player adjusts to the basketball, which is a very common thing you see against zone. And his job now is to cut to the front of the rim. We talked about how we try to teach our players not to float, uh, and that's important when other teams take away what you're trying to do. Uh, I want to show you an example of what I mean there with that. Um, you know, again, teams are going to take away what you want that what you want to do. So we're running Vermont here, um, and uh, you'll notice what happens 
uh, we, we make a play. And that's what it's about half the time. It's just having kids make a play. You're not going to be able to orchestrate everything, obviously, as you know. So here we're going to run Vermont. We send that shooter to the wing, to the, uh, to the wing again. Okay, right away he's occupying that bottom. He then slides up to the wing. Uh, sorry, he's coming from the baseline. Too. Excuse me. All right, and we're screening in the bottom of that zone again. Now it's important here to note I have a player on the wing here that is wide open, um, based on what they're trying to take away now. And we talked about how we don't want to float. Obviously, if you have a really high percentage three-point shooter on that wing, look at the space that creates. Uh, and that's something that uh, would work. Um, Harry was never a real high percentage three-point shooter, and he knew it, uh, but he was a strong finisher. And so, again, he did stand. He didn't float. Uh, he goes to the rim here. We'll show you another dive look uh, against the zone. Just trying to uh, trying to stress how uh, important it is to just make plays uh, when you have them in front of you. Again, teams are going to take away your best option on any look. Uh, so let's see if we can look at this offense here. Again, we're playing against the zone. And we have a situation where we're starting to look at that, that sort of overload look again. And again, when things collapse like this, we teach our players to cut to the front of the rim. That's a great action against zone because inevitably half the time, you know, 40% of your players are behind the defense. Right now, the ball's pretty low, so you wouldn't think about being behind the defense from the top of the key, but Asa found himself behind the defense and cuts to the front of the rim. Another basic action that we do in any, in any time we're running a set uh, is we talk about trying to seal out the wing. Uh, if you have a situation where you have a little bit of size, um, you can work on, on trying to uh, get behind the defense with a seal. So there was a turnover there, but I want you to notice the action we were trying to get here with our big from the bottom. Okay, so at this point, the bottom wing has had to engage defensively because we caught it in that no man's land again. I can't stress that enough. We don't want to catch it deep baseline. We don't want to catch it elbow extended. We want to catch it where best case scenario, you draw two defenders. And that's what's happening here with this catch. Now, right away here, you'll notice what our big does on the bottom of this zone. Instead of just flashing, which is an option, but notice Harry's catching the ball at the top where he might flash. He works hard to seal out the wing that had to engage that shooter. This is another miss right now. This should have been a pass and a catch. It was just probably a, kind of a poor pass. But we have a nice seal action uh, against the 2-3. Just sorry here, guys. I'm just looking at my notes a little bit. Um, so to finish this up, um, you know, I didn't want to take up too much time, um, but I think it's really important um, that every, you know, every program has sort of their own identity uh, when they are playing against zone. And, um, you know, it's, it's sort of unsettling if the only thing you do is work the ball around and get a good shot. Um, and so maybe a few of these sets um, that I've shown you today uh, can help you uh, and your team uh, get a look uh, in, against the zone. Uh, and hopefully if you, if you have any questions, 
um, you can reach out to me. Uh, I do teach about Mansfield Union High School. The, my email address is on the website. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, but if you have any questions, don't uh, hesitate to reach out. Uh, you guys are going to go through a rough time this year, obviously, with the COVID thing and, and how long your initial practices will be. Um, I don't envy your task. Uh, it's going to be a really difficult year to be a coach. Um, I think it's important that you keep in mind how valuable uh, extracurricular, co-curricular activities are, especially to the well-being of these kids this year. Uh, so you're doing uh, you're, you're doing a, a big a big service here. Uh, I understand it's going to be a grind not playing games until after January 11th, uh, but uh, just uh, the ability for players to wake up in the morning, go to school, knowing they can go to basketball after uh, gives them uh, a, a huge boost uh, in these really tough times. So I commend you. I thank you. And uh, like I said, hopefully a couple of these uh, things today might be something you can take away. Good luck this season, guys. And um, I hope you guys have a great year.